Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Cornell University, and in this video, I'm going to answer a common question I've gotten about Zoom. How can I see what my students are seeing? Especially if I'm screen sharing, I might not know exactly what is appearing on their screen, so how can I confirm that or see things from the student view? And unfortunately, there is no easy way to do this on a single computer. So if you are screen sharing, that's going to take up your entire window with what you're sharing, and you can't really pull up a separate window that shows the student view, even if you have a second monitor. But Zoom does let you log in to the same meeting multiple times on different devices. So I realize this doesn't work for everyone, but if you have a second computer, you can log into that second computer and view what the students would see as you are screen sharing on a separate device. So you might notice if you're looking at the thumbnails across the top or the participants list on the right here, I am actually logged into this meeting as myself three times from three different computers. So I am recording what you are seeing on my desktop computer and then off to the side here, I have two different laptops where I am also logged in as myself. So there's one. And here's the other one. And again, you don't need to create another account to do this. Zoom will just let you log in multiple times. I'm not sure if there's a limit. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've seen I've been logged into, I think, up to five or six different devices, and it didn't give me any problems. One thing you'll notice is that it can be a little confusing at first because it gives you the same name on every device. But as the host, you can rename anyone. So you can go in and rename the other devices or on the individual devices as a participant, you can rename yourself. So I'm going to take a second to do that here just so I know which device is which. And then we'll show how you can screen share from one and look at the student view from another. So you can see I have renamed all three computers so I know which is which. That way if I'm looking at the thumbnails here in speaker view or if I switch to gallery view, I know which video feed is coming from which machine. And if I really want to see the pure student view from one of these, I can re remove co-host permissions. So again, I'm doing this with three computers here. You would probably only have two, but for example, I'm going to remove co-host permission from my second laptop. And now on this laptop, I will have the pure student view. So this laptop is no longer a host. It's not going to have the host controls. And if I screen share or spotlight a video from another computer, I can double check this one to make sure what the students are going to see. And again, if you don't have the second laptop, you could have done that on your desktop computer instead. So let's do that. I'm going to set up a screen share from the other laptop, and then we'll confirm what I see on this one. So I am now going to start a screen share from my tablet PC here that I would use for handwritten notes. You won't be able to see this perfectly on the camera, but I'm just going to use Zoom's built-in whiteboard feature, which is an easy way to do handwritten notes. There are other ways to do this with um, third-party programs like OneNote or PowerPoint, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. So if I start doodling here, say a smiley face, some squiggly lines, my ABCs, one, two, threes, etc. Again, I am writing that on this screen, but that is showing up on the shared screen that I am recording here on the desktop. And I also see that on my laptop where I am a participant as opposed to the host. Now, you do have to be a little careful because this view is still not necessarily exactly what your students will see. They do still have some independent control over their Zoom window. So this does confirm that they are seeing my shared screen. And again, if I check my other laptop, I'm also getting the shared screen to pop up here. But on either machine, I can still individually control things like whether I switch between speaker view or gallery view. So on this computer right now, I only have this video pinned. I can switch to gallery view, and then I would see the thumbnails from the other machines as well. I am in side-by-side -side view here, so I can drag to resize this, and any of your students could do that as well. You can't control that for them. I could go up here to view options and get out of side-by-side -side mode, and now I have the thumbnails across the top and the main screen here. So again, you can confirm that your shared screen is showing up, but you cannot control which one of those view modes your students are in. So if you have students who get confused or lose the video somehow, there's a swap shared screen with video button. So maybe if they click this by accident, you could have a student saying, hey, your shared screen is tiny. How do I get it back? How do I make it big? You might have to walk your students through, okay, find that button, swap the shared screen with the video, or make sure you right click my video and pin the video. So 
by default, when you start sharing, it should be okay and kind of do its best to maximize the shared screen and make that big for everyone. But if you have students who are clicking around a whole bunch, there is a chance they could lose it and you can't get it back for them. You will have to walk them through that. One final demonstration here of how a student could possibly lose your shared screen. So if I go into full screen mode, click this little enter full screen button. And again, remember, I'm recording on my desktop computer, so this is not the one doing the sharing. By default, when I do that, the shared screen takes up the full screen and I get this little thumbnail that I can drag around with the other participants' videos in it. But there is still this swap shared screen with video button, and then you can minimize this thing. So now I have managed to get to a point where I'm not seeing the shared screen at all. I'm only seeing the video feed from one computer. And again, this wouldn't necessarily happen to every student. Students have independent control over this. So if I check my laptop again, this one still has the shared screen up. So it is possible if a student does enough clicking around that they could lose your shared screen and you'll have to talk them through getting it back. So in this case, I need to go back and hit this swap shared screen with video button again. And if I want to get the teacher video back, then I have to click this button to unminimize this little thumbnail. So I hope you found that helpful, especially if you are teaching online with short notice due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As always, if you have a question or a suggestion or request for another tutorial that you would find useful, please leave a comment. Thank you.